Hello, I'm Donald McKenzie and I teach sociology at the University of Edinburgh. At the moment, I'm doing research on high frequency trading. So let me begin by just explaining what high frequency trading, or people sometimes abbreviate it as HFT, let me explain what that is. When we think about financial trading, we still usually think about crowded trading floors with traders in coloured jackets shouting and screaming and gesticulating at each other. And indeed, the TV often still shows that kind of picture when something dramatic happens in the financial markets. But by and large, they have to get those pictures from their libraries because those trading floors are now almost all shut. What's replaced them is electronic trading. Now, sometimes that involves human beings trading with a keyboard and mouse, but increasingly it involves computer algorithms trading with each other. And one of those kinds of algorithms is high frequency trading algorithms. High frequency means that they tend to do a lot of trades, and they're nearly always very small trades, in fact, but they, they add up because huge volumes of them get done. And these are, by and large, proprietary trading firms who do this trading. That's to say, they're aiming to make a profit out of the trading itself rather than earning fees by executing orders on others' behalf. And, of course, there's no shouting, screaming, trading floor when algorithms trade with each other. Virtually all the automated trading of US shares, for example, happens in five giant data centers in northern New Jersey, which are essentially windowless warehouses packed with tens of thousands of computer servers and almost no human beings beyond a handful of maintenance and security staff. Now, I said at the beginning, I'm a sociologist, and by now you're probably wondering, what on earth is a sociologist doing researching a topic like that? Well, the particular kind of sociologist I am is a sociologist of science and technology. And we like stuff. We like machines. We like material objects, and we like looking at the role those play in relations among human beings. And high-frequency trading is full of those machines. It's full, for example, of technical links among the data centres, because prices and other data have to be flashed from one data centre as fast as possible. Sometimes this is done through underground fibre optic cables. Now, if at home you're getting your internet via a fibre optic cable and no copper wire, you're doing pretty well, you're going to think that is pretty damn fast. But it's not always fast enough for high frequency trading because light in a fibre optic cable travels at only about two thirds of the speed of light in a vacuum. So high frequency trading increasingly involves signals sent through the atmosphere and through the atmosphere they go almost as fast as they do uh, in, in, the, in a vacuum. Sometimes those are sent by lasers, basically, from tall tower to tall tower. In other cases, they're sent by microwave links. And that includes that involves a very interesting material dimension to today's high frequency trading. Financial economists, for example, have shown that patterns of US stock prices are actually affected by whether or not it's raining over the key route, which takes you from Chicago, which is where futures contracts are traded, to northern New Jersey, which, as I said, is where shares are traded. So there's lots of stuff, lots of things, lots of technology in high-frequency trading. Where's 
the human dimension? Where's the social, sociological dimension that attracts me? Well, one way of seeing that is to realise that high-frequency trading firms aren't big banks. They aren't the major incumbents in the world of trading. They're relatively new firms. They're typically small firms. You can be a very big high-frequency trading firm with only 150 staff. And by and large, they've had to force their way or kind of find their way into the established order of trading. Occasionally they're welcomed in, but more often the incumbents don't like these new, ultra-fast, technically very sophisticated players coming in and eating their lunch. So that kind of struggle, the struggle between the challenger HFT firms and the incumbents interests me. And I'm also interested in things like the effect of regulators such as the US Securities and Exchange Commission on that kind of struggle. But I'm also interested in how the overall context, what people are trying to do in high frequency trading, how they're trying to make profits, how that interrelates with the kind of physical technological stuff that I've mentioned. For example, how it interrelates with rain. So the key dimension, the key geodesic, as a geographer would call it, the great circle route on the face of the earth that's the fastest way between two points, runs, as I said, from Chicago to northern New Jersey. You want to get the futures prices from Chicago to New Jersey as fast as possible. That used to mean underground fibre optic cables, now it means microwave. But not just any old microwave. You want your microwave to be as close as possible to the geodesic because that's the fastest route. But it's kind of crowded, that geodesic, because it's so important to the world's financial markets. And microwave dishes can interfere with each other. So there's a kind of jostling to get on the towers as close as possible to the microwave. And you can't, and you can't as, close, big pardon, as close as possible to the geodesic. And you can't always use the most reliable frequency, which is six gigahertz, because that is too crowded. So you've got to go up in the frequency domain to 11 gigahertz, 18 gigahertz, 23 gigahertz, which are the kind of frequencies that make a microwave engineer nervous, the kind of frequencies that create this vulnerability to rain. So the social isn't just something that's outside of high frequency trading, so to speak. You can see its effects right in there, in the microwave signals, in the effects of rain, even in the very wiring in those giant data centers that I mentioned a few minutes ago. So that's what I'm studying. That's why a sociologist of science and technology is absolutely fascinated by high-frequency trading. Thank you for watching.